Today I wanted to just talk a little bit about gardening. And gardening does take a lot of work. You've got to plant things. You can buy seedlings and put them in or you can start things from seed. But as you can see over here, there's always a lot of weeding involved. And I find that this tool, Cape Cod Weeder, can you see it? Is so handy. It gets right under the roots and then you can just lift the plants, the weeds right up. But the next best thing, the best thing for a Cape Cod Weeder is just mulch. Now we take grass clippings from the lawn, bag them, and put them down. They decompose very quickly. They add nitrogen to the soil and that keeps the weeding down. You have to replenish them a little bit more. You can also use straw, which is also nice. Anyway, I'm just letting you have a little look of the garden here. Successive plantings are always good. I planted beets here then I planted another second row next to it. Those are golden beets. So when one is starting to become beets, you can still have the beet greens over here next to the lettuce. I put another little row of beet, beets in, so they'll be coming in succession. So successive plant, succession planting is very important. You can do that with lettuce and anything that maybe bolts. Spinach tends to bolt very quickly, so you need to maybe do a fall planting of that if you want in the fall. But anyway, here's the garden. I want to say... I I'm, guess I'm a little bit troubled these days by how much food costs. Seems like you go, you go to Whole Foods, you go someplace to buy organic food, or any food, but especially organic food for some reason. The cost is very, very high. And that troubles me because there's a lot of people who can't afford organic food, and they should be eating it. Everyone should have that right to eat it. We have this earth, we have the sun, the rain, all of it. And it should just produce food for people. People shouldn't be spending all the money that they slave over working to get on just feeding themselves. It, there's just something wrong with this equation. Food should be affordable, it should be fresh. And, you know, when food isn't fresh, you're just not getting that, that prana, that vitality from the food. And that's creating sickness. People are getting sick. They're not getting the nutrients they need from their food. When things are trucked halfway across the country, a lot of that energy and of that, that food source is lost in the whole process. They have to wax the fruit. On top of that all, we have GMOs where they're trying to interject different viruses and different potato plants, causing a lot of digestive problems in people unknowns to them. So my feeling is some there has to be basically a revolution in the in how we create food for people. And I think that comes down to starting gardens. Now, you know, not everyone can have a garden. Maybe they don't have the space, they live in the city, but they can be there can be community gardens and I'll do a separate little video of the Putney community garden near the Putney co-op. People rent a little space and they put gardens in. Now if you're too busy or you just can't bend down and work on a garden, maybe you could go in with it, in on a plot with someone else, let them do the work, pay them a little something. But so important to get that fresh, vital food. Especially if you're a vegetarian and you love vegetables. It's really, is so wonderful. I, we've been eating, let me just show you. Look at all this yellow squash coming in. It just comes and comes and comes. Now you could pay a lot of money for that and yet it's just producing. That one little, two, three little yellow squash plants are just producing all the squash I need. Pretty soon probably I won't be able to keep up with it and I'll just give it away to other people. So anyway, that's I think I want to go over here and just show you show you the beans coming in. Bean plants, I planted these from seed. And now they're going to just start climbing up the bean poles. There we go. Climbing up, and pretty soon we'll have some nice fresh beans. Nothing like fresh beans. And over here, let's go down here and some zucchini plant. These are kabocha. 
squash. Another nice thing in a garden is to kind of plant things that will last into fall. I've done a lot of that in this garden. We have a lot of kale. We have gill feather turnips. The chard goes into fall pretty well. And what else do we have here? Oh, yes. We've got some little delicata squash. Let's see if we can see that coming. See? There it is. It's just starting to form there. It's very sweet little squash. Bake it with a little maple syrup. It's so good. And then here we have Brussels sprouts. They go way into frost. Even in like in December we were eating Brussels sprouts. So there's lots of plants that go way into the fall. It's wonderful. You can eat the beets. You can pull the beets out later on as well. And anyway, that's the garden. You can have some flowers in your garden, which makes it just fun to be in the garden when you've got all these beautiful flowers to look at as well as the vegetables. Also these flowers, if you can see, these poppies. I don't know if you can see all the bees, tons of bees. They just love the flowers. I'll go over here to these poppies. Maybe we can see a few more bees buzzing around in there. Yeah. You can hear them probably. Anyway, these poppies just seeded themselves. A lot of this stuff, this Nicotiana jasmine, just sweetest flower at night, sends out this beautiful jasmine smell. I wish you could smell it, but anyway. Anyone who has the inclination, who likes to get their hands in the earth, who likes to eat fresh food, should start a garden. Well, we haven't been in the garden for a while with a little video, so I thought I'd show you how, how things have changed. We had a beautiful rain yesterday. Everything is just so saturated. Now, there's no poppies now in the garden. Let's walk over here. See, I took out the poppies. Yeah, the little flowers are coming. And right now we have some dahlias just starting to open, which should be very beautiful once they open up. But morning light in the garden is just so beautiful. I want to go show you one of these flowers here. It's not, they're not quite at their best, but they almost look like a rose. Isn't that beautiful? And we go into the argeratum there. Okay, so, oh, here's a dahlia. All opened up from yesterday. Let's see, this one is going to open. So look how things have filled out. Maybe you haven't seen this for a while. I'll walk down there. The fennel's gotten bigger. Brussels sprouts. Looks like a real garden now. Let's go over and I want to show you the beans. There are the beets, the lettuce. Did a second plant of, of lettuce here. And um, you can see that's coming up in the middle, and then on each side are the, these parsnips. They're finely growing. I hope they'll make it to a decent size before winter sets in. The turnips. Those little turnip plants I put in now, look at them. Squash is still going strong. Cherry tomatoes are finally, let's go look at them a little closer. Cherry tomatoes are finely ripening. It's taken them a long time, but hopefully we'll get a lot more. And here's some of those beautiful purple ones. You can see that with the, not beautiful with the little, all that wonderful rain drops on them. Let's go back out here. The basil's doing well. Everything loves the rain. It just seems like it's so happy. Let's go down here. Look at this pretty, the fennel plant. It's so beautiful. All the different colors and everything. Look at that fennel.
but look at the beans now. I haven't seen them for a while. It was the last video it was I was talking about how they were making their way up the pole, but now you can see the little beans are coming. All those bees are now buzzing over here. You can see that bee right in there buzzing around, pollinating. Let's see if I can find some bigger beans over here. Ah, there's some. There's some beans right there. Just had a few last night, the first beans. They should be coming in pretty well now. Oh, look at, maybe you can see in there. Let's get over here. Not supposed to touch bean plants when they're wet. Have to be careful. Let me get in there. Well, it's a little tricky. A little tricky to get in there. So, anyway. There she is. Going up, 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 up. And then it's going off the top. I don't know what it's going to do when it goes past that. Anyway. Zucchinis. Oh, I want to show you some winter squash. Let's go over. Let's go over here. Show you the winter squash coming. There it is. That's a gabocha. Hopefully that will get big enough too. Not too many on the plant for some reason. I don't know why. But I wanted to go and show you the other squash. But isn't that pretty? Look at the garden from here. All the different shades of greens with the oranges of the flowers. Let's go over. Look at the delicata squash. been so much fun gardening this summer. I have to say, it's been really a joy. And look in there. There's a little delicata squash right there. You see it? There. Isn't that beautiful? And look at these beautiful Nicotianas. Looks like a fountain. Those flowers coming off. And look at this. Let's go take a look at this. Look at that. It's going to be a sunflower opening up, and here's another one over here, just starting to open up. Beautiful, huh? Design in nature, so incredible. And then here's the Brussels sprouts. Can you see them down there along the stem? It's starting to form. That's exciting. And the fennel, let's take a little look at that. See, down there, the bulbs. Better start eating that, I think. Yeah, so pretty. Sunlight on that, so gorgeous. Well, I think that's about it. Take you back. Another look this way. Everything all dewy. Look at the asparagus with the light on it. It's so gorgeous. Feathery, capturing all that silvery color with the pole beans in front. You know, a garden can just be such a such an artistic event. You know, with colors and how you place things, what flowers you might want to put in. You can really have fun with it. So when you go up, you can enjoy it on that level as well, with the textures and colors. It doesn't have to be just something you grab your veggies from. It can be an artistic expression for you. It's a whole nother level. You have the time. It does take time. But it's so rewarding just to come up and be in the garden and see the apple tree back there. It's starting to have some apples are getting a little redder on it. Soon we'll be having apples. Look up at the field there. Isn't that beautiful? They just hate it. Okay, well that's a little morning tour of the garden after a beautiful rain and let's end with this beautiful dahlia again. This is our first dahlia that's really bloomed. I'm so excited. I got them in late but now they are coming and it's
just so beautiful. Look at these pretty lettuce. These coppery lettuce. They're a, a butterhead, so I'm letting them kind of form a head, and hopefully they won't be too bitter. The dill is kind of flowered out now beautifully. Here's some more turnips coming. So, there you can see the progress of the garden. Things are a lot bigger. We've got some nice zucchini here. Somehow this plant doesn't have the I think it's, I don't know why, it doesn't quite have the same powdery mildew going on, but look at those zucchinis. They just grow overnight. I mean, these were teeny little things, and, you know, at this point, I'm having to give them away. Although you can grind them up as soup base and freeze them. You can always make zucchini bread. I want to come over here and show you. Let's go this way, actually. Isn't it pretty, the the light on the early morning light with the little dew on the, the asparagus. So fine and lacy. It makes such a nice addition to a garden, this light green. And the bees come and they're kind of buzzing around these little flowers. Anyway, I wanted to come down here and show you show you this kabocha squash. Isn't that nice? That's coming along. Hopefully that'll get nice and big before winter. And sometimes what you have to do is come along here to the tip and just like pinch off this part. You have to pinch off the end and that will create more growth into the you see here's another little one coming right there. Let's see there's another little one just starting. But if you pinch off that tip right there, then it'll create the fruit to start growing along the vine. Now I want to this is bean pole three because last time we talked we probably didn't see many beans and they were just starting but now we are getting flooded with these Kentucky Wonder Pole beans. Let me just see. See back in there? All those beans. Got to pick them today. Look at them up here. See them coming up there? There they go all the way up. They're just climbing to the top, but they're really wonderful. Let me just go, let's go pick one here. Yeah. I can just chew on it right now. Mm, they're good even raw when they're fresh like that, and they're so tender. There's some more over here. Let me just see right there. Those nice. Mm. They, when they come in, they just come in. Look at that little tendril just going off into there. It's so beautiful. Anyway, that's the progression of the of the garden. It's done very well. I'm very happy. We'll probably be look at this beautiful kale. Probably be picking all these leaves and making kale chips. And kale chips are very easy to make. You just take the leaves, strip out the, the vein, take little bits. You just come down here, just take these little bits. You leave this, this vein out of it, break them up into little pieces, and then you coat it with, with some olive oil, and then salt it, and then just put it in the oven, low temperature, and just bake it a little bit. And when it's crispy, it's done, and you can put it in a box. They keep, you can actually freeze it. And kale is very high in calcium, so it's a very good source of calcium. And it's just a great little snack food. You can take those bits and crumble them over whatever food you're eating. So anyway, that's the garden in its fullness. You can feel now that fall is coming. You can feel the energy is different in the garden. Things have started to mature, but there's this also different sense of energy here now. It's Things are going more, less towards a push towards growth, but more of a, more of a finalizing everything, I, I would say. Things are going to seed. They've kind of done their work. 
it created their fruit and there's more of a withdrawing energy now I feel so anyway that's a beauty of a garden it has its stages in life just like humans and it's a wonderful thing to participate and watch and look at the different things as the things mature and grow and then you harvest like you can see here I had lettuce on this side I took that out some of it had actually bolted it had been very hot lettuce you have to get quite early or else it does get starts to get bitter for instance this lettuce here you can tell when it gets bitter I don't know if you can you can see it all but sometimes there's a little milky milky substance that comes out along the edge of the leaf that means it's going to be very bitter let's see uh, oh yeah it's so bitter I did I have to confess I this lettuce was so beautiful in its color I kind of left it too long I should have been eating it but um, anyway the have when lettuce comes up it has it's more of a spring crop you need to eat it and not let it get go by anyway let's finish off here with the the beautiful dahlia it's the gardens yeah. so beautiful so much fullness in the garden such perfection in nature Well, here we are back in the garden, morning in the garden, and I just wanted to give you a little tour now that the garden is kind of flushed out. We're kind of going into mid-August now. It's a different feel in the garden. It's things have produced and things are slowing up now. You don't feel that same rush of energy and growth as you did in the early spring. Now there's sort of a quieter feeling. I wanted to go over here and show you some of the beautiful dahlias. Isn't that beautiful? They filled out beautifully. This beautiful argeratum here. So let's go around and I wanted to talk a little bit Day about some of some of some of the pests that we might encounter in a garden, and I'm going to go over here to this Brussels sprouts, and I wanted to just show you some of the holes in the leaves here. This is due to a cabbage worm, and let's let's go in here and see if we can't just can't find one. Oh, Yep, there they are. Okay. Let's get one out. I can show you what it looks like. Okay, see that? That's a little cabbage worm. That's what's eating all those, the leaves and creating those holes. I do pick them off. I do get rid of them, but I'm not sure how much damage they really do. I just wanted to show you. This is a Brussels sprouts, and I wanted to come down here. Let's go over here. There, can you see? Can you see those Brussels sprouts in there? They're starting to grow, and they'll grow from the bottom. The, the ones at the bottom kind of get bigger. Let me just push down here. See? There you go. You can see the Brussels sprouts. Then you just pick those off, and those go way into fall, sometimes into December, and they don't, they don't freeze. It's wonderful. It's a great fall into winter crop. So cabbage worms are one of the things you face as a gardener. Let's just see over here. I'm going to go over and show you something here. See these leaves on the, this is a summer squash. See that, those leaves, how white, it's covered with like a white powder. That's a powdery mildew. And that's kind of starting to take, take off here now that the season's kind of progressed. You can see the new leaves. They don't have that on there, but then look over here. It's all this white powdery. So that can be a problem. I hear you can spray them with a little 
two quarts of water mixed with two tablespoons um, baking soda and then put a little bit of dishwashing detergent in there to kind of probably hold it on the leaf and spray it. And I haven't tried that as you can see because I have lots of powdery mildew starting which isn't too pretty looking but anyway we're still getting some if you can see back in there you can see all the summer squash there. It needs to get, get picked there. There you go. Okay, I wanted to show you something else here, though. Squash plants can be attacked by two different things. It's not only the powdery mildew, but it has some squash bugs. And there's also something called the squash bug bor borer. Now, that will bore right into the stem. And once it bores into the stem, the whole plant will die. It just creates a tunnel through the whole the whole main stem of the plant. So what I did one morning as I came in and I and I cut out the borer because I had been away and then all of a sudden I came back and I could see like a hole in the stem and it kind of oozes something that's out. You can tell there's a, there's a squash vine borer in there. And then what you do is you take some tin foil and wrap it around the stem. And that helps to prevent them from from boring into the stem. So that's one measure you can do. But, you know, that's gardening. Sometimes you just, you start, everything's going along well, and then sometimes the bugs come. Anyway, we'll just go through the garden a little bit here. And I think that's pretty much it. I'll, on the bug part of things, these squash, just wanted to show you how the, these zucchini are doing really well. Let's go take a look at look at the zucchini there. These leaves are looking pretty good. I better spray them with some of that mixture to keep them from getting too much of that mildew. Now I wanted to come over here because we've been monitoring the growth of the, the pole beans and I wanted to give you an updated look at what's happened since we last videoed these. Look at this. Let me step back and and just sort of pan these pole beans. Look how they've gone up. Isn't that beautiful? All the way up. Going up to the tippy top. It's draping now, it's draping over. Let's go in, take a look here. Last time we saw it, there was a few little beans coming. But now let's look in through. I'm not going to touch the plant because you're not supposed to touch a plant. And you see those beans? Isn't that beautiful? We've got tons of beans here. And you know, they're really quite good. Let me just go in here and try not to touch the leaves. I'm just gonna take one and... Mmm. Oh, they're so good when they're young. They're so sweet. These are Kentucky bowl beans. Let's go take a look up here. Yay. Let's see all the beans coming. All the way up to the tippy top. I'm going to have to get a ladder. I have to get a ladder to kind of... There's the little tendrils going off. It's kind of neat, isn't it? It's beautiful. Anyway, lots of beans. Well, let's just look over here. This is so pretty. Look at, look at over here into the... Asparagus ferns coming up with all that mist and dew on it. It's quite beautiful. Let's go over here. Maybe we can get a few more shots of some beans here. beans. Lots of Kentucky pole beans here. Yeah. Anyway, this is the garden in its fullness. The beans have finally come in and I want to go over here and also show you the the little kabocha squash that are coming in. Isn't that beautiful? Not so much, so many kombucha squashes, but there are some, and that's going to be great. And I want to show you how the 
Kale's grown up a little bit more. Let's go over here and we'll get a little close up. The kale is just so beautiful. Look at that orderliness of that structure. It's just so gorgeous. And the dill has started to make to go to seed. But how beautiful. I'm just letting it go to seed and enjoying it in the garden just as a just as an accent, a beautiful beautiful color. Let's go over here and take a look at the little sun gold tomatoes. With a little dew on them. So pretty, huh? Look at these. Catching that morning sun. And you have what's beautiful, you can take, say, you got this theme of some orange, then you can come. Add a little bit of orange with the calendula. Look at that beautiful ruby char, just sort of a little bit of bright red there. You can really play with colors in your garden. Now let's go over here and look at these interesting colored tomatoes. Basil's still doing good. We've been enjoying that, putting that in soups. Let's go here now. I haven't shown you the sunflower since it's come out. There we go. It's pretty nice. Get some sunflowers out of that. The fennel. Let's just do an update here on the fennel. Let's take a look down in here. Take this away here. See, isn't that beautiful? We've been enjoying that, sautéing that in with vegetables. It's really lovely. It's so beautiful, the, the dew in the first light. It's just such a beautiful combination. You can see how I've interspersed some of the calendula into the garden. So that's all here. I want to show you the delicata squash. Let's zoom in on that. Let's stick this here. There you go. See? That's coming. That'll be nice. There's nothing like a delicata squash baked with a little maple syrup and butter. This has the powdery mildew too. You can see um, how it's kind of attacked the leaves. Got some pretty snapdragons in the garden now. Those just seeded themselves and now they're they're actually blooming. They're quite beautiful. Let's go over here and take a look at the this beautiful calla lily. Isn't that lovely? It's nice to have a little dash of red in the garden, isn't it? It just brings everything everything out. So let's just come in here and finish with a picture of the dahlia. It's in its full bloom. So beautiful. And that's the tour of the more filled out garden. I hope you enjoyed it.